in today's video, I'm going to be taking a look at this A52S 5G Samsung. Um, it's took a heavy impact at the top. It's, it's not showing anything on the screen, but when we plug it in, it does it does make vibrations and stuff. So the phone's on, it's just not displaying any image on the screen. And that's really, really common when these displays have took a very, very heavy hit. So I'm going to put it on the heat mat for five minutes and then we'll start taking it apart. Once the phone's had five, 10 minutes on the heat mat, it's time to remove the back cover. We can do this by taking a razor blade and just making a small incision in the gap between the mid-frame bezel and the back cover. I then put a couple of drops of isopropyl alcohol in the gap and then use a playing card to start separating the back cover from the frame. On this one, there's not too many obstacles to look out for, but you should be careful on the right-hand side of the back cover for the for the sub to main flex cable because you don't want to snag that and have to buy another part. Once you've worked your way around the edges, you can just sort of open it up and pull away the cover from the last bit. Because it's plastic, it is quite flexible, so you can be a little bit rough with this one. Once it's opened up, there's 10 Phillips head screws that's holding down this plastic cover protecting the logic board. Remove those screws and then pry up on the cover to remove it. Use a plastic spudger to disconnect the battery and isolate power, then do the same to the charging flex. Make sure you remove the SIM tray before you go any further, as this will stop you being able to remove the logic board from the phone. Then there's just one little screw underneath the cameras here before finally disconnecting these two coaxial cables. With everything we need disconnected, we can now carefully lift up the logic board and put it to one side, ready for installation into our new frame. Now moving on to the bottom of the device, there's six Phillips head screws. Remove those to release the loudspeaker and charge port cover. Like the main board, there's one screw holding this down. Remove that, then disconnect the charge flex and the display connector. Be careful when removing the fingerprint sensor. It can be stuck down quite well and sometimes requires a little bit of heat to get it out. And finally, remove the subboard with the coaxial cables still attached. Now it's time to remove the battery. Add a few drops of isopropyl alcohol around all the edges and let that soak in for five minutes before taking a playing card and sliding it underneath to release the adhesive. And with that safely removed, I just add a little drop of isopropyl alcohol to loosen the adhesive holding down the vibration motor, then pry it up with some tweezers. For this repair, I'm using a brand new Samsung service pack. I'll have the link below on where to find these parts, but they're much better than any aftermarket parts. They're usually faultless and very easy to install. This one comes with the frame attached to the display, which means we don't need to use any glue and everything just fits perfectly. Look out for any protective films and remove those before you start putting anything back. Starting with the vibration motor, we'll drop that into place, ensuring it's secure. Then the logic board goes in, top in first, ensuring that the cameras are sat down correctly. Reinstall the SIM tray. It just holds the logic board in place, as well as the single screw that holds it down. Now it's time for the battery, but don't reconnect it to the logic board yet. There's another plastic film covering the fingerprint sensor. Take that away and then install the sub board. Reinstall the lonely screw before reconnecting the fingerprint sensor. Make sure the coaxial cables are installed properly. On this one, the white one's on the bottom and the blue one's on the top. This bit's a little bit faffy, but ensure that those cables are clipped in properly, otherwise you'll have connectivity issues later on. Reinstall the flex to the subboard, and then attach the plastic cover and loudspeaker, and secure down the six screws. Make sure that it's all clipped in properly as well because often there can be little clips that haven't secured properly and it'll leave the back cover not sat right. Reconnect the flex to this main board. Now we can connect the battery. Then attach the plastic cover and screw down the 10 screws holding it in place. Try and avoid losing any as often there's some connectors 
that rely on those screws to be secured. Finally, it's time to reattach the back cover. And because when we removed this one, the adhesive stayed perfectly intact, all that we're gonna use is this Tessa adhesion promoter that will sort of reactivate the adhesive. I apply it with a cotton bud all the way around the old sticker and then simply just press it into place. And you'll notice straight away that this is secure, it's not coming off. Now that's all fixed back together, we can just test the touch function work, we can see the display is working fine. Thank you for watching the video, I hope that you found the information in it useful and it helps you to repair your own device. If you did find that there was any value in there, leave us a comment, subscribe, turn on notifications, you know what to do. See you next time.